Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Saturday Morning Adventures continued. Issue number three from IDW. So I thought this issue was going to continue the story that we kind of left off in the previous issue. I mean, that issue ended the arc. It was uh, the Rat King. He basically is able to control the turtles. And that was done. But there was a little setup for like the next story. And that setup was Shredder with part of a meteorite that he was going to use to create a weapon. And for some reason, we don't have that at all here. There is no shredder. Instead, this is just kind of a little one shot. So let's just jump right in. We start off with the turtles in a sub that was granted to them by the TCRI. And Professor McGuffin explains that there was this probe that was sent down and it got lost in the bottom of the ocean. But we, we need it back. We need it back pretty quickly. I have a submarine that can, you know, get you down there. Fortunately, I don't have any staff that I can send. So can you guys do this for me? And the turtles are like, sure, like, we'll go do that. And so that's why they're in the sub down in the ocean. And I will say that the artwork for this is freaking fantastic. It is a exact one for one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon series from the late 80s, early 90s. It basically looks like this is like an episode and they just took screen grabs from it. Like it's that accurate. And I'm like, oh, I love this. This takes me back so much. Um, so yeah, the turtles are down in the ocean, a giant squid. Uh, mechanical squid grabs them and takes them to this domed city where they see a bunch of uh, amphibians and the amphibian creatures take them to uh, their king and queen and their king and queen introduces them to turtle antis so it's like atlantis but turtle lantis and um, they are obsessed with turtles and i thought this was probably gonna like, go somewhere like maybe they see the turtles as gods or something no, they just are obsessed with turtles for some reason. And um, they are kind of like, not at war, but they're kind of like rivals to Atlantis. And um, the turtles are like, okay, like all that is interesting, but we don't really care. <laughs> We're just down here because uh, there was a probe sent down here and we need to get it back. And the king's like, oh yeah, like I got that thing. We, we, we have the probe. You can have it if you want, but there's something that you need to do for us first. There's this uh, champion, and you, you got to fight him because he won't leave us alone. And so we had the turtles basically getting ready for a gladiator fight. And I thought this was kind of just a little interesting sight gag where we see Michelangelo, and he's dressing up in this outfit. And at the end, Raphael's like, Michelangelo, take that thing off. It's freaky. And the outfit is actually the last Ronin outfit. <laughs> so I was like, okay, that, that's... That's pretty good. Uh, I, I like seeing Michelangelo dressing up as the uh, the last Ronin for just a, a throwaway gag in this. So yeah, um, he takes it off, obviously. And then they dress up like gladiators and they go to this coliseum where the king introduces them and he introduces the champion that's been bothering them. And the champion is Slash. Uh, so yeah, basically what happened is Slash saw um, something shiny in the water and he thought it was his binky. And so he went down to, and it turned out to be a mechanical squid that captured him and took him down into this turtle Atlantis. And the reason why he wants to be the champion is because he realized that the people here kind of revere the champion more than they do their own king. So he's like, all right, I, if I become the champion, then maybe I can eventually take over this place. So... Yeah, that's why he decides, okay, I'm going to be a champion here. I'm going to not leave until I take control of this city. And so the turtles have to fight him because, um, yeah, the king is basically getting sick and tired of Slash and wants him to leave, but he won't. So the turtles have to fight him, but they are uh, not doing so well. Uh, it seems like Slash has just been overpowered because I don't remember him being this strong in the original cartoons. I mean, yeah, he, he, he's he's like Bebop and Rocksteady. I mean, he's basically uh, their pet, if I remember correctly. Um, so the turtles should have no problem fighting him, especially four on one. But uh, they're struggling. And so Donatello comes up with this idea where he's like, all right, I'm going to go talk to the king. And he talks to the king. And he asks the king, hey, like, are you guys able to survive underwater? Because I know this, this giant dome that's like keeping all the water out. But is that because like you, you you'll drown like you can't breathe underwater and the king's like nah we just prefer to be dry but we can totally survive underwater no problem he's like all right so uh 
yeah, the plan is that turtles are going to run back to their sub and they're just going to flood this entire city and hopefully eventually Slash will uh, leave because Slash, while he can be underwater for a while, he can't be uh, underwater for too long. So yeah, uh, they're going to flood the, the entire place and hopefully either get Slash to leave or Slash will drown if he stays. <laughs> so I'm going to stop it here because I don't want to spoil everything. I will just say that this is a one shot. This isn't like the part one of a ongoing arc. It, it ends like the story concludes in this issue. And the next issue seems to be a issue with Leatherhead. Which again just begs the question. What are we doing with Shredder and Krang and the whole meteorite that they have? Are we going anywhere with that? Are we just gonna? Did we just set that up and then that goes nowhere? Because <laughs> I thought we were gonna continue that here. Like that was gonna basically be the next two issue arc that we see. It would be Shredder and the Meteorite, and then we'll get like another two issue arc or whatever, and just basically just keep setting up for the next arc. But no, we don't. We don't have that at all. Instead, we just get a one shot with Slash and the turtles fighting him in a giant coliseum in uh, Turtle Lantis. And then we got the setup, like I said, for the next uh, issue is going to be Letterhead. I will say that I enjoyed this story, but it's kind of, I enjoyed it. It was entertaining, but it was kind of weak at the same time. So it, it, I think it would have benefited more if it got another issue. And instead of a one issue arc, it was like a two issue arc. We could have done a little bit more there. It's just, it's kind of fast. Not really all that much happens. There is really no closure. Like it, it just. Let's just say that the name Professor McGuffin is accurate with this, because the whole probe story kind of goes nowhere. It just, it's just kind of set up for them to go to Turtle uh, Atlantis. And yeah, uh, I was kind of disappointed. Um, like I said, I, I, I'm, I still found myself entertained. I think most of it though was the artwork. The artwork is what really just kind of sold me on this issue, just because the artwork is, like I said, it's. It's so freaking similar to the cartoons that it just, it really captures that whole aesthetic perfectly. But other than that, like the, the story itself was kind of weak. Uh, the previous two issues were definitely a lot stronger than this one. Hopefully the next issue will be better. I mean, we do have Leatherhead in the next issue. Leatherhead's always a pretty cool, interesting character. So hopefully uh, things will go well there. But yeah, uh, I guess if I were to grade this, i give it a 5 out of 10. It's uh, an average issue. If I was grading it on just story, it would be like a 3. 3 out of 10. Maybe maybe a 4 out of 10 if I'm being generous. The artwork is what really kind of saved this issue. Or at least made this issue um, okay with me. Will I recommend it? Uh, if you didn't like the previous issues, no. If you're... Um, if you're okay, like if you're one of those where like you've read the previous issues, you love the previous issues, but you don't need to collect every single issue from a run, like you're okay missing some issues here and there, then I would say that this is like a skippable issue. You can pass on this one. It's not all that great other than the artwork. Like the story itself, like I said, was kind of weak. But um, other than that, I mean, obviously I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it because it's the Turtles and it's the Turtles based off the cartoon series. So, yeah, but other than that, yeah, a little bit disappointed, but a five out of 10 is what I would give it. So there you go. There's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Saturday Morning Adventures Continued, issue number three from IDW. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time. Take care. Later. So what'd you guys think of that video? I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe, hit that bell for a notification, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far, and I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see, and I hope to see you guys next time. Later.